evening, friends. How are you? It's Heike, and it is Thursday morning, almost noontime. And I don't know about you, but one day seems to blend into the next, just like I'm wondering what day is it today? And I got a clue today because the trash truck came. And that means trash pickup is Thursday. This was a huge help. So working from home has its benefits, but it also is a little confusing when you're not used to working from home all the time. So today I'm talking about the three mistakes you avoid or you can avoid, I like you to avoid while working from home. It's me, Heike Yates, and I'm here to empower women in midlife to take back their health and strength with simple fitness strategies. So right now, many of us are working from home and we're looking into how do we manage this new life right now? We don't know when it's going to end or how things will change and evolve as we're continuing with the coronavirus and the situation that as the virus spreads. But may as it be, we're at home, we are potentially with the husband, a partner, a friend, uh, the kids, the dog, the cat, whatever you have in your house, but suddenly you are bombarded with those people and pets, which is you love them. But on the other hand, you, when you go to work, you're not sitting there with these people all the time. So it's really tough. So number one is one of the mistakes to avoid is not treating working from home like a job. So it is not snow day and it is not going out gathering with people, but it is staying inside, staying away from everybody. So what's the biggest temptation? staying in your PJs all day. So I've cleaned up for you guys today. I'm not staying in my PJs all day, but the temptation is great because you're not going out. You don't see anybody. And if you don't have meetings online where people zoom and see you in person, you have really no reason to get out of your PJs. But that's one of the mistakes that we make working from home, not getting out of our PJs, schlumping around all day, potentially working from the bed or the couch in a really launched back position. And these are really two big things that I want you to change. I want you to think, okay, I'm going to work today, even though you're not going to work. I want you to, if you're the person who takes a shower in the morning, you hit the shower, I mean, you start, of course, let's backtrack. You start with breakfast. You get your coffee and tea, maybe check your emails so you're wide awake by the time you actually starting to work, uh, have some breakfast. And most of you, or many of you know that I don't eat breakfast, I am intermittent fasting. And so breakfast time for me is uh, just drinking my cup of fennel tea and then I go about my business. But I want you to get out of your PJs, into the shower, get yourself, dressed up, doesn't have to be fancy, but put a pair of jeans on and a nice shirt and be ready for the day. It changes your mind completely when you feel you're smelling good and you're actually looking good and not with hair sticking up and disheveled. So get out of your PJs is one mistake to avoid. Think about you getting somewhere as if you're going to work. I want you to sit up, not lounge around in your couch or in your bed. I want you to find a chair, doesn't have to be an office chair, where you can sit upright. You may have to grab wherever that is in your house, the couch table or whatever, the dining room table closer towards you. So you actually have things right in front of you. So you're ready to work your laptop or uh, whatever you work on. I'm lucky. I am set up with two screens here. So I have one over here and one over here, a mouse and a keyboard that is um, wireless. So I'm totally mobile with all my stuff. And I set it up because I'm going to the office. 
So I am working from the office and I want you to adopt that mindset as well by sitting up straight and sitting up tall while you're working and not crumbling into yourself. And from a Pilates coach point of view, this is a must. Because just think about how your spine and your back are going to react when you sit all crumbled up all day and just doesn't feel good. You can't breathe and then you get achy. So find a cheer, sit up tall. Number three in our number one, not treating your job like a hobby, is that I want you to plan your day. Ideally, I want you to plan your day at night. But may as it be, I'm most productive in the morning, so I'm planning my day in the morning. I am taking my fennel tea and I'm sitting down and I'm going, okay, here we go. These are the big projects I have to do today and I break them down into little bits and pieces. Your day is including off times, peeps. You're not continuously working your buttski off just to be more productive. You're planning in your breaks. That means every time you finish a project, you go and get up and walk around, look outside, check out what everything else is, what everybody else is doing potentially, or just get away from your desk and from the screen. You can do this. You're taking time to have lunch, prepare lunch. You take time to maybe take a nap. I'm a big nap time person, so nap time could be a winner as far as I'm concerned. And you will not, excuse me, <coughs> you will not uh, miss out on work. So this is a big one when you're working from home, that you're treating your job like it's a real job. You get dressed like you're going to work, you sit up tall, you plan your activities, meaning your work, around what you need to do. That means that if you homeschool your kids, they need to fit into that schedule as well. So think about how that works in with your family life and that you are ready to embrace this new lifestyle that and make the best of it starting the day. Number two in our three topics are neglecting your health. And I touched on it a little bit with the breaks. You have to have a break, guys. Get up in between your assignments, anything you work on. It doesn't matter, but you need to get your butt out of the chair. Walk around, uh, take the dog for a walk, uh, just get some more water. Or as you guys know, I drink a lot of tea, so I have my teacup with me like almost all the time from fennel tea to orange tea to turmeric tea. I have all kinds of teas. But take a break. It's really important. Preparing healthy and nutritious meals. That means that part of your eating right now supports your energy level and the well-being. Create a sandwich or a salad or what is that has that has the rainbow, that has healthy fats. And you know my healthy fats are always, most of the time, an avocado, my favorite thing to eat, and lean proteins. And they could be anything. It could be the leftovers from the night before if you heat up the, the food, if you can, or you make a sandwich or you make a big salad. But look at what you're eating right now is more important because now you're not going outside, you're not going out for lunches, you're not having dinner lunches or anything like this. So make meal time a special time. If you, let me backtrack a little bit. Many of us are snacking and currently, or many of us, are not moving as much, nearly as much as we have in the past. So maybe you wanna rethink your snacking. Do you really need a snack or do you go out and eat because you're bored? Do you eat because you just feel like not sure what to do next or uh, you're not really hungry or you're sad and you feel really fearful about where we are with the coronavirus right now. So think about, rethink your snacks. 
And also when you go out to your potentially bi-weekly grocery shopping, you may want to think about when you get to the toilet paper aisle and you say, oh my God, there's still no toilet paper. But I go over there to the other aisle where the Cheetos are and you may grab a bag of Cheetos and it's on sale. One buy one, get two, and you grab those Cheetos and you're all happy that you you bought something and it may not be the toilet paper, but you got something that makes you happy. Leave it at the store, because you know if it's in the house, you will eat it, friends. So don't get any junk food in your house. Grab more vegetables, grab more fruit, and toilet paper, I'm sure, will be back at some point soon, because most of us have enough uh, toilet paper at the moment. So don't neglect your health as number two. Another thing that I want to touch on a little bit here is meal prep time. Meal prep time, some like it, some don't, is an amazing way to connect with people. And guess what? You could just call up your friend and say, hey, I'm starting to cook. Uh, you want to hang out with me chatting? Let's drink a glass of wine and let's make a meal together. And you may end up even eating the meal together. How about that for social distancing, eating healthy and not like ne neglecting your health? So think about how you can do things a little differently than you have in the past. And number three out of our uh, what not to do or the mistakes we make when we're working from home is taken this opportunity of working from home for granted. Many people in our lives don't have a job anymore. They got laid off. They can't sit like I'm sitting here with you and have a chat or work on my online business. They're screwed literally. They got laid off and a friend of mine who works at a restaurant and he was in an upper level position, he got laid off because they have no customers and they had to close and they're only open for takeout. And that's not something he can participate in. So he sits at home now and he's twiddling his thumbs, exercising a little bit more, but he does not have that opportunity to do his job like many of us can do right now. So don't take this for granted. I don't. Make the most out of it. And that is learn a new skill. I've signed up for two courses right now that I'm taking that help me become better in my business as a fitness and nutrition coach. They have to do with marketing, learning different skills, courses that help me be better on Instagram and and and. Uh, how to take better pictures, whatever it is for my business. But think about what you can learn as new skills that you have uh, put off forever. And that also is, if you're like me, and I'm sure many of us are, you buy these books, business books, that you just never get around to read. Pick those books up and start nailing those books because there's so much wealth in the books that we bought and we've never really addressed them. So get out those books, whether they are online, whether they're an audible, whether they're a real book, start learning. And this is the perfect opportunity to have those breaks in between your work if you're online working to say, okay, now it's time for my education hour. I've set an education hour for myself aside every day an hour. Now, the last thing here in taking the, not taking the opportunity or taking the opportunity for granted working from home is become a tech wizard. Yeah, technology. And I hear it, especially in the fitness and Pilates world. Many coaches go, I have no idea how to do a Zoom. I don't know how to do lighting. I don't know how to do a Facebook Live. This is the opportunity, friends, to learn new skills. And you may not want to go on Facebook Live, but whatever your business is, it is important that you grow during this time and that you don't just hunker down, keep busting whatever you have busting along, sticking with what the boss has given you. Think of what you can do to grow yourself, your mind, 
and strengthen your body through exercise. So these are the three things that I want to touch on today, the three mistakes to avoid when working, working from home. Number one is not treating it like a job. Number two was neglecting your health, and that included penciling in your exercise. I don't think I mentioned that. The most important thing for me, to pencil in your exercise every day. And lastly, taking the opportunity for granted that we can work from home and still be productive and still con can contribute to everybody around us. And as a fitness and nutrition coach, this for me is an awesome opportunity to reach out to you and help you with anything that you might need. And I know we are bombarding you right now with a ton of Facebook lives, a ton of Instagram lives and exercise here and exercise there. And it can get a little overwhelming. I feel that way. And I did some videos for you, which you can find over on my YouTube channel. But if you want to get into exercise, go to my YouTube channel. I have three minute workout videos. For the most part, they're three minutes. I started doing a little bit longer videos as well. But you can do just three minutes, do one video. It's over at Heike Yates on YouTube and add on or repeat the same video a couple of times through if you like it. They're with equipment, without equipment. So I got you covered in that department. I have nutrition tips over there. Uh, so check out the resources that I have. Take a step back and see where you are in life right now. See what you need right now. And I want to send you off with this final message of give yourself some gratitude and reflect on what's positive in your day. What are you going to be proud of today that you did today? Reflect on that. What are you grateful for today? What are you excited about tomorrow? What will the next day bring? We're in a time of fear and uncertainty. Gratitude, giving yourself a pat on the back, and creating excitement is what we, I would like you to strive for and reach for. And I'm here for you, and you tell me whatever it is you need from me right now. You can write it in the comments below this video, and I put a link for my YouTube channel, but comment below and let me know what you need. And also, if you're not sure where to start and you're not a YouTube person, go over to my website, Heike Yates, and grab your free Five Spark Lifestyle Planner. I have recipes in there and I help you find a good direction when it comes to your nutrition and your exercise that is so doable. So with that, my friends, have the most amazing day and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.